Quilt Stories. I'm thrilled today to be speaking to Ricky Timms, who I've been a great fan of for many, many years, and we've met quite a few times, including uh, South Africa, where we shared um, views of lions and giraffes and, and wonderful things. And um, Ricky is speaking to us from his hilltop in Colorado, and um, it's just wonderful that technology has finally um, managed to get us together again after a few false starts. So hey. welcome, Ricky, and it's great to have well, you. Well, it's great to see you. It's been, it's been a while. It's been about a year. So um, we have a presentation that Ricky is going to um, walk through the creation of one of his quilts, which is um, also available as a pattern. So I'm just going to uh, share the screen. And so, hey. Ricky, would you like to tell us about this quilt and uh, what inspired you about it? Absolutely. So, Lisa, this is a quilt that's called Northern Lights. And I named it Northern Lights because it shimmers and it's very iridescent, but also because I have a composition that I created. Um, it's, a, it's an orchestral piano piece that also features my little toy piano. Oh, really? And uh, it is on my album, on my album called Christmas in a Small Town. Mm -hmm. And it's very, and it's a very adventurous piece of music. I, I thought it should have been the lead title for the Harry Potter movie. So that's how much I love the piece of music. <laughs> oh, great, great. And it was inspired by a uh, vintage quilt, yes? Yeah, so, um, so I will tell everybody that while I am very much an artful and contemporary quilter, I am often inspired by antique quilts. And so this quilt is an antique Amish quilt. Um, it's called Streak of Lightning. That's kind of the pattern, and you can see the ziggy zag of the lightning shooting down from the top to the bottom. Um, and uh, it is from a private collection, Darwin Beerley's collection. So um, I, uh, I enjoyed seeing this quilt in the book and I wanted to use my hand dyed fabrics to create sort of uh, my own contemporary replica of the quilt. And that's what Northern Lights is all about. Right. So, so um, I, I've got some stories for the quilt, but maybe do you want to go through the techniques or do you want to hear some stories before we move forward? Um, I like stories. I like stories too. This quilt is probably about eight years old. I believe I made it in about 2012. Um, and during the time that I was working on this quilt, my dad, who is, I should say was, also a quilter, uh, for those that don't know, I started quilting in June of 1991. And when I called my parents that weekend, I had planned on making a shirt. I decided that a shirt would be too difficult and I just stumbled upon a quilting book and decided to make my first quilt. I called home that weekend to tell my parents what was going on. When I when my dad answered the phone, I asked him how his new stained glass project was going because he had just retired. And he said that the stained glass was, he didn't like it. And I says, well, then what are you doing? And he said, I'm making a quilt. <laughs> so my dad and I started quilting the same week in June of 1991. I had set out to make a shirt my dad had set out to make some stained glass and both of us went a different direction and we both landed on making a quilt. The nucleus of it is it's really stunning that my dad at age 65 and I was 35, we started quilting the same week. That's great. So my dad continued to quilt all these years. He made very traditional quilts but he also only wanted to make quilts eventually. He only wanted to make quilts using my hand dyed fabric. And the reason he liked that is because it didn't have a right or wrong side to it. <laughs> so he could never get a piece on it upside down. So he liked that. Well, um, my dad eventually 
began showing signs of Alzheimer's. Uh, the dementia set in and it got worse and worse. He and my mom had come to Colorado while I was starting this quilt. And so the nine patches are made using the strip set method that I'll show in a moment where you sew the strips together, right? You cut the yep. strips, sew them together, and then you cross cut so that you can make your little units. My dad was very far advanced in his Alzheimer's, but I asked him if he wanted to help me and I would cut the strips because he couldn't do that. But if I laid the strips by the sewing machine, he could put them under the quarter inch foot and he could perfectly sew all of these strips. So he didn't cut anything, but he did sew the strips for this quilt. And it's the last quilt that he and I worked on together and it's the last quilt he had any of his hands on. My dad passed away in August of 2015. So this quilt is very special to me just because my dad did help. Um, when yeah. it was all said and done, he doesn't remember visiting my house. He didn't remember working on the quilt, but he did. And that was a very special memory for me. That's wonderful. You'll never let this quilt go, will you? <laughs> this is beautiful. I, I don't think I will. No, I'll keep this one. I think so. So let's, all right, so let's jump over to the technique. We can go back past the antique quilt as a reminder of what that looks like. Yep. And then scoot on into the next slide. Okay, so here's the fabric, one piece. Right, so the, I, of course, I do hand dyed fabrics. Now you could make this quilt in any, in, with anything, but you know, there's a lot of, hey, hey, hey. I'm sorry, my dogs are being a little bit uh, That's playful okay. right I've got now. Good they just woke up from. Um, you can find batik fabrics that have this kind of movement. It may not have color movement. It may not be this dramatic, but this is the kind of fabrics that um, that I hand dye. When I say I hand dye, Ricky Timms is a company. I have a single mom whose job it is to hand dye fabric for my company. So she uses recipes that we've created over the years. Mm -hmm. And this is called a multi caveman fabric. So notice this one has a lot of intense color, rich reds, deep yellows, really intense blues. And then now let's look at the next fabric, which is going to be much different, but still have movement. So this is much lighter. It's a delicate purple, a delicate green, the oranges and yellows are much more delicate. So I need some fabric that contrasts, but I also wanted to take advantage of what this fabric can do. Yep. So I now need to make strips. So let's, let me show how I cut these strips. So I'm gonna cut five strips from that multi-bright. Okay, now this is gonna be for one column of, um, we'll see in a minute, but one column of nine patches. So I would do what I'm about to do for every column of nine patches. So I'm gonna cut five strips from the bright one. And on the next slide, you're gonna see, I'm only gonna cut four strips from the muted one. Mm -hmm. And now I'm gonna sew these nine strips together in three sets, which is the next slide. And that is, I will use a, uh, there's the five and there's the four. I'm sorry. There's the five and there's the four. So now we go to the next slide. So at the top, I have a strip set that has bright, delicate, bright. Another one that is bright, delicate, bright. And the last one is delicate, bright, delicate. Yep. So now I have to keep things in order. This is really critical. We're not just going to jumble these bits and throw them on our table. Mm -hmm. But the next slide shows that I'm going to cut the, so now I've sliced them all into the widths, which is the same width that I did for the strips. And you can see how these are all laid out and staying in order. Now, the first one on the top left, the first one in the middle, the first one on the bottom left, those are going to become the first nine patch. Okay. So the next slide will show how I'm taking each of these and turning them into nine patches. 
So up at the top, you can see there's five grayed out areas. And at the bottom, I have five nine patches that I've created from those. Mm -hmm. And I will continue the sixth set becomes the sixth nine patch. The seventh set becomes the seventh nine patch. And again, I want to be sure that I keep all of these nine patches in order because I want the color to slowly change just like the slowly changing colors of the Aurora Borealis, the Northern Lights. I don't mark them because I just, knew to, I just know how to pick them up and stack them. But of course you could use little post-it notes or you could mark them if you were concerned about that. Yeah. So, um, and also I will say, Lisa, I use a design wall. So as soon as I finish my blocks, they go up onto a design wall so I don't have to leave them laying around in stacks. Where they can get I work on the design wall. Okay. So yeah, well, I, you can pin them. Yeah, you could pin them. All right, so here's my, here, here they are. And you can see one, two, three, four, all the way across through 14. And those are just laying kind of in order. In order to make them bigger, I kind of jig jogged them up and down, but you get the idea. Yep. But now they need to be turned on point and turned into a column. So that's what the next slide shows. Yep. And that's what that column does. And now you can really see how the color just drips and slowly changes. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it'll be higher contrast, sometimes it'll be lower contrast. And then, of course, the quilt has setting triangles that go in between all of these. But primarily, I'm trying to show how I use that fabric to create this quilt. And you can see how it ended up. I, I, I love it. It's actually very easy to do because it's nine patches and triangles. That's all it is. Yep. And the triangles um, so, are separate fabrics. Well, like in one row, I have a solid black, but in another row, I have kind of changing color triangles, and I've got some light pastels that kind of zigzag through there. Yep. Um, and I don't know, can we see the full quilt again? Is that there? Because it's probably easier to see. And I do have this in a pattern. That is the pattern. That's the original quilt, again, as inspiration, mm -hmm. which I love. I yep. love that quilt so much. And then this is my version. Now, I, I want to tell another story. Mm -hmm. um, when I made this, I did not use a template for my setting triangle, for the little triangles that go on each side of those nine patches. Yep. I did my math and I just, uh, I rotary cut. So when I put my nine patches all together with those, it all matched all the way across. It matched perfectly. Mm -hmm. But I need everyone to look at the far left and the far right. It is a tiny column of just triangles going ziggy zag zig zag. So there's a black and then a print and a black and a print and a black and a print and a black and a print. That tiny little column on the left side and on the right side, um, because I was not sewing it onto the nine patch, it got about two inches longer than all of my other columns. Oh. <laughs> and I was about fit, I was fit to be tied because the nine patches were what was making everything to be the same. And because I had measured with the rotary cutter and ruler, I ended up with this side, these two side strips that were about an inch and a half longer. And I had to ease it all in. I almost threw this quilt in the garbage at that point. I just thought I'll never get this fit together. But eventually I made the adjustments necessary. And I tell everybody that story because, you know, we all encounter problems when we're working on a quilt. And I will tell you, I wanted to give up, but I decided, no, I'm not going to give up. And I'm really glad that I didn't. Mm -hmm. And then also when I made the pattern, I made a proper template for that triangle. So nobody else will have the problem that I had. Perfect. <laughs> on those outside borders. 
And yeah. the pattern is still available so, um, where? We sell the pattern on my web website and we also have a kit for this quilt mm -hmm. of course the fabrics won't look absolutely exact but we have the muted fabric and we have the bright fabrics and uh, even the border fabric uh, is similar to the border that's on on this quilt yep. so i love it because it's an e i mean i say it's an easy quilt it's nine patches and triangles but the impact is really big and that's what makes me excited about quilts yeah is impact and the story behind it um is sort of <laughs> makes you want to cry actually because it's just um it's a memory that can never be repeated so that's absolutely beautiful as well one of the things that i know that you understand and one of the things that i proclaim is that making a quilt is far more than making a quilt. Making a quilt ends up being the, the drama of life that's happening while the quilt is being made. Indeed. If someone is making a quilt right now while you're in quarantine or while you're maybe dealing with a loved one who's been ill, all of those memories are stitched into that quilt. And so I find the quilts to bring, that's why when I see this quilt, I'm reminded of my dad at a very, um, I'd say tragic, a difficult time in his life. Mm -hmm. But I'm also comforted by the memories that are in the quilt. And I think we all can relate to that. Definitely, definitely. You really treasure those memories. Speaking about isolation, um, how are you coping? What are you up to? <laughs> well, I, nobody's, Nobody gets to social distance probably more than I do. Mm -hmm. I live on a mountain in Colorado and I am seven miles from another human. I have two employees that um, once they, they, had to, they had to stay at home and shelter in place, but once they were allowed to come back to work, they wear masks and I go and I see them. So I interact with two other humans. Um, and other than that, I make a visit to a grocery store. And if I'm putting gas in my car, I have gloves on and I have uh, wipes to clean off the keypads and I don't go in and pay inside. So I have really been sheltered mm -hmm. uh, out here on the mountain. And of course, a lot of your, uh, your, uh, your people, your fans, will probably know that I, I also live in a place that had a tremendous uh, burn, a wildfire in 2018. I had just finished the house three months before the fire and I've had the land for 18 years, um, but it's beautiful place, but it burned. It was the second largest wildfire in history of Colorado and my house was miraculously spared it was uh, truly miraculous yeah. because the fire, yes, the fire literally came within feet of the house, like 20 to 30 feet from the house. Mm. So you've been planting a lot of trees yourself. How many trees did you plant, you know, to, re to reforest the area? So with, uh, with, 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 I want to give kudos to the quilters. We had tremendous donations that came in to help purchase saplings from the forestry. And then last summer, we had a group of people that came from Canada, from Iowa, from Kansas, from Texas, Colorado. Volunteers came to help us plant 1,700 trees. Now, in some respects, 1,700 sounds like a lot of trees. Mm -hmm. They were just, you know, saplings. They were six to eight inches tall. But planting 1,700 trees took us weeks, weeks of grueling work to get up on the mountain, to haul the water up to where we were planting. And we've had very good survival rate with those trees. So I'm very excited to announce that. But um, I think you saw me post on Facebook a very special picture. Do you have that picture? This little fir tree that's in the middle, that little tree, I did not plant it. It is the first one that I've seen come up on its own. It's sitting there in some weeds that, yay, the weeds give us a little bit of green. But I've been curious as to how long it would take to find a tree that 
I did not plant or that one of our friends did not plant. And this tree, I think I'm going to name this tree Hope because <laughs> I know where it's at. It's not far from my house. And as it grows, I will be able to see it outside my window. And as I walk around the land, I still haven't seen another one. I know there will be more, but it's exciting to know that in the middle of a, an extreme burn area, that still a seed can find its way into a crack and find a way to root and find a way to come up. So that's my favorite little tree right now. Amazing, it's wonderful. Um, what's happening with the quilt show? The quilt film? show, um, well, yes, we can't film. Uh, we haven't been able to, but the good news with the quiltshow.com, for those of you that don't know, I'm, I host a television show online with Alex Anderson, and it's called The Quilt Show, thequiltshow.com. I'll be putting it. And we everything. had to cancel our taping in March. That's fabulous. Thank you so much. The, the, uh, what we've done is we've gone back and we pulled out what we call master classes. In reality, we're pulling some of the highlights of piecing. And we have two shows that we've done over the years on piecing. And we're assembling two shows on applique. And it makes a really great encyclopedia for people wanting to see a lot of piecing techniques by a lot of guests in one show. And also the applique will do the same. Now we are scheduled to take new shows uh, in August without an audience. Mm -hmm. So we're crossing our fingers. Alex Anderson is going to do four shows from her home in California. And I will not go there just for safety reasons, yep. but what I do, I'll be just like this. I will, I will be, you know, brought in via the internet. And I won't be a huge part of those shows, but we're just trying to continue to give our, our viewers plenty of good content and keep them encouraged. Now, on thequiltshow.com, Alex and I are both doing live Facebook things that are also on YouTube. And we're offering a, a kind of a quilter's quarantine special for $19.95. That's US dollars, but it's for a six month. A subscription and you don't only get to watch uh, you know the shows that are current you have access to the entire 335 shows that are in the library That's so it's a really really good value for people looking for some content it's kind of like Netflix for quilters <laughs> and whatever topic you want the quilt show has covered it so um, that's great yeah that's great Okay, and are you creating anything yourself at the moment? Well, I'm saying yes to the, I'm answering that question yes, and we had discussed prior to this call that I might show it, but I decided I can't show it. It is an entry that I have created for the upcoming Houston International Quilt Festival yep. for the International Quilt Association show. And um, I don't even want the judges or jurors or any public to know that it's my quilt because it's a bit of a departure. So I want to remain anonymous. So we'll have to show everybody that quilt um, once the once judging is done. Absolutely, and we look forward to seeing it. That's great. L let me just share a couple things with the viewers while we've got everybody, okay? Yeah. I'm gonna go turn my lights on. I wanna show you this right here. Hang on a second. Okay. So these are two ravens, as you can see. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of a raven lunatic. You see a <laughs> raven on my shirt. Oh yeah. Often, right. But um, those are quilts, actually. They're behind glass and they're framed, but they're by a, a quilt artist named Judy Allborn. Mm -hmm. And I commissioned those my house, my house is called the Rookery, which is a gathering place for ravens. Right. So I have ravens everywhere in my house, literally everywhere. <laughs> and then I thought, while I'm able to be somewhat mobile, let me walk out the back door and I'll give everybody a view 
of what the burn area looks like now with all of the undergrowth. The <laughs> fir trees, uh, they, can, well, they will come back, but it's very slow. But I'm gonna go outside and let everybody just take a peek outside here and I'll turn the camera around. So this is, oh, this is where I live. That's hard to take, Ricky. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I know, it's hard to take. So it's a beautiful area. I'm watching Mother Nature do her thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a beautiful day here. I'm glad. We have a little cool weather. I know you guys are moving into winter, yep. but I am very much happy to be in the beautiful early part of summer in Colorado. We don't have snow, so our winter is not as severe as yours, but I've seen photos of your, your place um, in the snow and it's um, very different. That's magnificent. I can see why you want to be there. It's just um, a beautiful place. Um, I'd like to really thank you for giving up your time today to talk to us. Um, I'm sure everyone's going to love this little peek behind the scenes of Ricky Tim's and also to see how easy it is actually to make a Northern Lights quilt. And um, I hope lots of people go, yes, that's a pattern I want to do while I'm, I'm stuck at home here. So it's been great to see you and um, take care of yourself, stay safe and healthy. And um, I look forward to catching up with you sometime in the future. Thanks, Ricky. Yep. Thank you.